a man and his wife walk into a barber shop. The man asks the barber, give me something my wife would like. So the barber strangles the man to death. Wow! One, two, three, four! It's funnier in Italian. <laughs> uh, Daniel Stolfi is with us this morning. Uh, you know what, that's just a little snapshot of some of the, the work, his work, and he likes to make people laugh, but seven years ago, you were diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, a big challenge in your life, and from that, you came up with a show called Cancer Can't Dance Like This. That's right. Yeah. And uh, tell me about that. So you, you were writing this show while you had cancer? I, I was writing the show uh, while I had cancer in the hospital. One of my first days in the hospital, I was like, uh-oh, this is a big deal. This is going to be an undertaking that I just couldn't even grasp at the time. And I mm -hmm. started writing the show uh, with the hopes to perform again, to get on stage again. You know, if I was ever able to do it again, I would perform the show. And I had the intention of doing it once, one time only for friends and family. Uh, at the Second City in Toronto five years ago. Mm -hmm. And five years later, you know, I'm, I'm, I've taken the show across the country from St. John's to Victoria. To New York. To New York, yeah, yeah off Broadway there in New York. So it's won a Canadian Comedy Award for Best One Person Show. Um, we've helped raise over $75,000 for cancer amazing. research. Like, it's, it's just kept on going. It's been really, uh, been really wild how people have reacted to the show. And, uh, they just wouldn't let me stop doing it. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> you know, now I'm uh, doing the show for one last time. So, so. cancer usually isn't a funny thing. Uh, no, exactly. And when you tell people it's a comedy, yes, yeah. the, the reaction is, come on. <laughs> like, I don't know how comfortable I feel about going to see a show like that. But in order to survive cancer, sometimes you got to laugh your way through it. That's right. Yeah. And I'm a, I'm a comedian and, uh, you know, an actor and comedian. I try to laugh my way through a lot of uh, situations and... I didn't think I'd be able to laugh my way through cancer. You know, mm -hmm. it was one of those things. Even my mom was like, eh, you know, Daniel, I think this is the one thing you don't joke about. Joke about right? yeah. um, and it's not that I'm, I'm joking about it. Uh, it's, um, it's just finding the humor and, and finding a lighter side of it to uh, make it more palpable for people, you know. And, and you probably heard a lot of stories along the way. After your show, do people come up? How do they react to this show? What do they tell you? Yeah, you know, I, uh, the, the reaction is always fantastic it's always surprising to me every time i do the show i'm like oh, oh there's going to be somebody who's going to be offended yeah. and, you know after shows i've had people come up crying and i'd, I'd be like uh oh i'm in trouble and but it was tears of joy and appreciation for sharing the story the way i did and taking the words you know out of their mouth basically and expressing it to people so that other people could understand how how they feel and what they're going through so and, uh, you know, I experienced that, uh, not myself individually, but my brother, cancer treatment. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of uncomfortable sometimes. When you're sitting in rooms with other cancer patients, you really don't talk. Yeah. It's, it, there's not, not a lot of communication. Yeah. And do you poke fun at that? Um, I, I, I really put the focus on myself in, right. the, in what I'm po poking fun at, you okay. know, um, because I... I, I one to stay away from offending anybody, <laughs> anybody yeah. right? So if I'm going to offend anybody, it's going to be myself, kind of in a, in a way. Um, but uh, the, you know, uh, people who are who are going through cancer usually have actually a very kind of weird, twisted, twisted humor. sense of humor, yeah, you, you know, and it, yeah. you kind of have to. And and it's always surprising. You know, you make a little joke and you test the water, and and they'll joke right back with you, you know, and and uh, and you just have a good laugh because you understand what each other are are going through, what you're going through. You know, it's a this commonality, this bond, that kind of... Happens. And this bond, you know, you, you met your wife through this bond? I did, I did. <laughs> I mean, my wife, uh, thank goodness, never had uh, cancer, but uh, she fell in love with me while I was going through treatment, <laughs> which uh, says something about me and my charm. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, or we're, sympathy. We're, yeah, or sympathy. Yeah, yeah, she felt really bad for me. I should marry this guy. Uh, but yeah, we've been married for uh, for just over a year now, so it's fantastic. Congratulations. Yeah. You're cancer-free right now. I am. And, and of course, it's going to be next Friday, January the 30th. You're going to be uh, it's at the Great Hall. That's at uh, 1087 Queen Street West and Dover Court. For more information, go to cancercantdancelikethis.com. Daniel. Thank you. Keep laughing. Thank you very Thank much. You. I Keep will. Keep smiling, Toronto. We've got a lot more coming up right after the break.